Okay. We are live. Wonderful. All right, let me just pull up my Google dashboard. There it is. Okay, so today we are making a live, lifelike world in Game Maker. I don't know how this is going to go exactly. Um, for all the people who watch this on YouTube in the future, this will be a video that you can obviously watch, like a regular video on my channel. Um, just want to get an introduction out of the way. So thank you for watching. If you can, head over to Patreon and drop a dollar or two in the hat to keep uh, these live streams going. I'm back to work now, so um, Friday nights is really you know the the most time I'll get available to do these. So I look forward to that over the weekends. And um, let's get started. So we're going to make a living world. What is a living world exactly? I have no idea. Um, besides the actual living world which we have experience in living in, what I think this is, is I was playing Stardew Valley and I, I was walking around the village and there were like NPCs. They were walking around, they were doing stuff and they were going into shops and, you know, they're doing things in those shops. And I was like, hey, this, this is really cool. This is a living world. So I, I want to create that kind of... Thing. I want to create something where like the, the world is alive, the NPCs are walking around, they're doing things, they're going into shops, they're going to meet each other, they're setting out, embarking on journeys to do something like maybe they want to go to the bakery and get bread, maybe they want to go to the flower shop and get flowers. So I want to create something living. Maybe they even want to meet up at the town square or something like that. So let's get started. I'm going to pull in some graphics. Graphics. Here we go. Um, I'm going to start off with a sprite sheet. Just the Kenny assets. I'm going to use the roguelike sprite sheet. And to be honest, the the the, the thingy, the, the, the thingy, I don't know what I'm trying to say. The, uh, the, oh God, the character model doesn't matter is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm going to convert this to frames. Let's zoom in on it. Let's have a look at what we've got. So these guys are, oh, there's two per row. We only want to have two frames per row. They're 16 by 16 with a pixel offset of one. Uh, sorry, no, zero. They have a spacing of one and one. There we go. So if I convert that, off we go. We've got a sort of animated dude that'll do for now. Um, let's rename this. Hey, Raspberry Picker. Let's rename this SPR, I don't know, person. Now, my code tonight's not going to be super clean. I'm just, I want to get this idea up and running. So, that's the most important thing today is to get it working. So, RM level 1, let's call that. Let's go and bring in a tile set. So, I'm going to be bring, bringing in the Kenny Assets um, tile sheet as well. So, let's just call this SPR Tiles. And I'm also going to create a tile set. I'm going to call this TS Main. And we're just going to select the sprite tiles for that and let's zoom in on these so we can set these up correctly so these are 16 16 it's already detected it they have a separation of one pixel one pixel um and that's done right cool done ts main all right let's head into our room and let's just define some room parameters first first up i want the room to be 12 1280 by 720 that'll do for now and we will give it the we'll give it a tile layer and on that tile layer we will set it to use ts main and then on ts main we will paint the background to be our tile set um then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a viewport um i'm going to enable it i'm going to set it to visible i'm going to set the room 1280 by 720 um and the viewport properties yeah, again 1280 720. I know I don't have to do this, but eventually the room will get larger, so just set this up now. Let's run our game, make sure it's working wonderful. That's working fine. Alright, so let's rename this layer to ground. So rename this as ground. And I want to put ground below our instances. And then I'm going to create another tile layer. And let's call this... What are we going to call this? Let's rename this layer. Let's call this collisions. Or collide now collision will do collisions give it the same tile set and let's just pick some graphics what graphics can we use here there's not too many like sort of outdoorsy graphics let's just throw in some tents we'll put oh not like that All right, let's throw down some tents i'm not going to be particularly particularly um 
fussed about, you know, what it looks like. I just want to create a place for people to go and do stuff, you know. Um, so let's just set this up like that. Maybe another one there. Wonderful. Let's head back to our ground layer. I'm going to throw in some dirt path. Uh, dirt path, sort of just connecting all of this. We're just going to do something very simple. Like that. That I'll clean up the paths later. They don't have to be super precise either. So do that, do that, do that, do that kind of thing. Head down there to that guy. Bring over to this guy. There we go. Wonderful. And I'd also like the paths to be of a width of two. So again, super. Um, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> Not super pretty, but the idea is to have NPCs sort of walking between these houses, you know, doing their thing, going about their days, trying to just exist in this world. Let's put some more path down like that, and then we can just erase that one. Whoops, that needs to be back to grass. Okay. So, there we go. Um... So what I'll do next is, actually, I'll just erase that and that, and then let's put the grass back in here. All right, graphics don't matter too much, so that'll do. Let's go back to our collisions layer. On our collisions layer, let's throw down some trees. So I'm going to just block off, not really completely block off, but, you know, make it a bit difficult to get places, just for no reason. You know, so there needs to be a, a path that's taken in order to get to places. You know what? Screw it. Let's block this off as well. Oops. Let's throw down some more path like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Throw down some of that. Put some path over here. There we go. And maybe just somewhere around here like that. Alright. This is super nice looking graphics. Not really, but get the idea. All right, I'm waffling. I just wanted to make something to sort of block the paths off a little bit. And I know I just went over the thing. We'll change we'll change the ground layer a little bit just to sort that out. Obviously, there's no dirt path underneath these. So we'll have to fix those up. That's fine. Let's put some more dirt path here. Some dirt path there. Okay. That's good enough for now. Right, so what I want to do is I want to create... Let's first of all get some things up and running. Let's get some stuff moving around on the screen. I'm going to create a controller of sorts. Let's call this OBJ AI for artificial intelligence. And in the create event of this, I'm going to create an MP grid. So let's just say um, my grid equals MP grid create I think is the function create there we go and now our let me increase the font size for you guys so you can see it as well there we go so our parameters are going to be left and top so zero zero horizontal cells just room width divided by 16 um, vertical cells room height divided by 16 uh, Oh, hang on. What, what have I messed up here? Comma. Right. Um, cell width, they are 16 by 16. There we go. So that's done. Then what I'll do is I will add a draw event, and I'm going to draw that to the screen. So let's just add a draw event. And I'm just going to say draw MP. Actually, I think it might be MP grid draw. MP grid draw. And I'm going to draw my grid. My grid. I can't remember what I called it my grid there we go so I'm going to draw the grid to the screen um, actually you know what I'll do I'll set the alpha as well draw set alpha draw set alpha we'll set it to like 0.8 and then we'll set it back to 1 so that way the grid is kind of like semi-transparent and now let's just go and throw that down on our instances layer so that it exists in our room put our AI object on the screen and let's have a look I don't think we'll get anything on the screen because there's no grid. Oh yeah, we got the grid. These are all the tiles that are okay to move on. Um, now what I might do is set this to 640 by 360. 
and then just adjust the position of that. So let's make it say, I don't know, 120. Yeah, that's probably better. Let's make it a little bit more than that. 140, 150, 160, <laughs> 160 by 100. Perfect. So that way it's sort of centered. It doubles the pixel count so that it looks a little bit, um, a little bit better um, in some ways. <laughs> Set this a little bit lower as well because it's just a little too bright for us. All right, there we go. So now we have this grid overlaying our game. We need to detect where the houses are and where the trees are and turn them into uh, collidable tiles. Thank you for F Google. <laughs> That's awesome, man. If you do show it, um, send me a message on Twitter at RM2KDev and I'll have a look at it. That'd be awesome. Um, so I'm going to go into the create event and we need to get reference to our tile layer. Um, so if I can remember how to do that, I think there's a script for this tile get. Tile get at x and y. There it is. Tile get cell at x. Tile get x. That's the one. We'll use this example code right here. Let's put that on here. So the layer we're looking for is called collisions. Did I spell it the same? Collision. It's called collision. No s. Right. Then we're going to get a reference to the tile map. Then we can get the... Uh, we don't need this function now. Right, so that's cool. So we've done that. So now what we need to do is we need to iterate over... Uh, we need to iterate over... Um, we need to iterate over the map. So we need to go for var x. Actually, we'll just call this um, cx for collision. Equals zero. Uh, while cx is less than room... Room width divided by 16. Actually, you know what? Let's turn this into a variable. Let's call this um, room width tiles equals room width divided by 16. I don't know why I'm putting brackets around that because I don't need to really do that. Room height tiles. This is the height. H-E-I-G-H-T. And that will mean that we don't need to do the math over and over again. Just a little performance boost in doing that um, so what we'll do here is we'll say cx less than room height tiles and then we'll say cx plus plus all right so guys i'm gonna be back for two seconds it's gonna flick a switch in the kitchen one sec Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, yeah, you guys are right. I just uh, I just messed up. Hey, Top Ice One, Level Max, Jelly Two, Master Pro Double XL. You guys are right. It's width. Sorry. Um, so we're iterating over the room. We are getting the X position and the Y position in tile coordinates, so that we can then turn it on as a blocked area in our um, motion planner. All right, so that's our CY variable set up. Um, now what we need to do is we need to get the tile at that position. So we can use a, a tile function. Might be tile get. Nope. Let's have a look. What have we got? Tile get. Here we go. Tile map element ID cell X cell Y. So this is going to be map underscore ID, CX, and CY. 
this is GML. It's a horrible mix-up of C and some crap that they were making when they decided to make it. <laughs> um, and we're going to call this tile ID. So var tile ID equals that. Now what we can do, let's show debug message first of all. Tile ID. Let's make sure we're actually getting tiles out of this. We'll see those in debug messages down the bottom here. So there should be something other than zero somewhere. I tell you what, let's let's change the way that works. Let's say if tile ID is greater than zero, then show the debug message. Let's rerun that. Um, oh, come on, what did I do wrong? I'm forgetting a uh, an angle bracket parentheses thing. All right, there we go. So we've got a bunch of tiles in the game now. Let's pick those up. Wicked. Now what we can do is we can just get rid of this because we know that we're making a, li a living world. Pride. It's not crap. It's uh, intuitive. It is intuitive, but it's not intuitive if you're if you're trained as a as a real programmer. There's some things that this language does that just drive you insane and don't work the way that they, they really should. Um, and that might be intuitive for people who don't program. And I guess in a way that's that's good because it's a tool designed for people who don't program. But most people who use it are programmers. And so it kind of drives most people bonkers. Um, so if the tile ID is greater than zero, we need to turn on the collision. So we're going to say map grid... Sorry, not map grid. MP grid. We're going to block off a cell. We're going to add a cell. Here we go. And the cell that we're going to add is, first of all, we're going to add it to my grid. And then we're going to add it to uh, CX and CY because they've already been pointed down to um, a 16th of the room. So now, in theory, we should have a room. Here we go. So you can see that the trees and the buildings now are blocked off. This works in our favor because our... Um, collision, not collision system, our our AI movement system <coughs> will automatically take into consideration that they can't walk in these areas. So now that's done, let's create a character. So we're just going to call this obj underscore um, AI person. No, let's not do that. Let's call this obj underscore, um, I don't know, NPC. That'll do. Uh, let's give it the appropriate sprite. There it is, and let's just throw a couple of these guys down in the room. Just, just throw them around, you know. Uh, actually, we need to set our grid offsets as well to 16 by 16. There we are, and let's throw these guys down here. Wonderful. Let's throw one there, let's put one there, let's put one here, let's put one there. So now we've got some people in the world, it's not so dead looking. Um, and what I want these people to do is I want them to to go to a house just like randomly. They they pick one and they go there, and that's their that's their directive. They're like, I am going to visit John at John's blacksmithing, you know, or or, or whatever. Sally at Sally's fish store. I don't know. Um, so the NPC is set up. Let's create another object. Let's call this object OBJ underscore destination. This is a destination object, and I'm going to create a sprite for that, and I'm just going to edit it, and I'm just going to resize it, because 64 by 64 is too big. Let's make it 16 by 16. Nice little blue corners kind of sprite. There we are. Blue corners, and we'll put a little... There's the line tool. Just go straight from there to there, straight from there to there. That's programmer art at its best, right there. Let's call this SPR Destination. Now, on our game, let's go onto our instances layer, and we're going to put a bunch of destinations at these at these houses. This can be their destinations. Now, obviously, the house isn't three tiles wide, so I'm just putting the destinations on the leftmost pixel. Um, let's go in here and do this. Ender quills. Hey, how you doing? All right, so we've got a bunch of uh, we've got a bunch of uh, destinations around these houses now. Um, now what we can do is we can make our NPCs first of all detect where are they going, um, 
and how are they going to get there? And we'll, we'll, it's like something simple and easy that can do a lot of things, but refuses to be like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it can do so many things, but when you try and do that one thing that's really different and complicated, it just gets in the way. Um, anyway, so they're going to pick a destination by, at random. And so what we'll do is we'll just go in our create event. Um, actually, let's add a user event for this. We'll add a user event zero uh, and we'll call this pick a destination and generate a path. Um, now in our create event, we'll just say initialize and we'll put a, what are we going to do? We'll put a var underscore, no, we'll put a var my path equals uh, path add because the motion, um, the motion planner system works with paths. Then what we'll do is we'll go into our draw event and we will draw the path and the sprite. We'll say draw self and path. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, uh, draw self to begin with. And then we're gonna say draw, I think it's path draw actually, path draw. No, it's draw path. There we go, we're gonna draw the path. My, there's an error. My path is not set before using it. We probably need to say if my path and then render the path because it probably it doesn't exist. Oh, what have I done wrong here? Draw if my path. All right, let's get rid of the path drawing for now because it might need something else first. I'll just put a comment around it. Um, so in user event zero, we're going to pick a destination. So we need to use instance find. Instance, we are using instance find. Um, and we are looking for object destination, obj destination. And the index of that is instance, we're going to use a random, I random. And the random value we're going to use is anywhere from itself to its maximum. So instance count. Uh, is that a function? Instance count. I can't remember how you do this. Um, let's have a quick Google. Pick random instance. Actually, game maker. Pick random instance. Here we go. Choose a random instance of an object. I swear I've seen a script that does this. Here I go. I found it. Wonderful. There we go. Paste that in there. Right. So someone's already done this for us. We're going to use a oh, it's instance number is the function I was looking for. Um, so what we're doing here is we're saying find us a instance of object destination. And then N is like which instance? Because there could be many instances. So we're going to use whichever one comes up from the random function minus one from the number of those instances on the world. And I'm going to call this target and actually we'll create target in, um, I know what the error was, by the way, my path. And then we'll create my target equals no one for now. And then after event user zero, my target is going to be defined as whatever the result of this is. Okay. So my target equals that. All right, so now we have. Now we have a target and a path. We can go back and we can re-enable our path drawing function because the issue was uh, variable scoping, which is now resolved. There we go. So obviously there's no paths because we haven't made a path yet. We just have a path in memory that doesn't have anything in it. Now in our user event, we have a target. We need to create a path, an intelligent path to that target. So I'm going to use the MP functions. I think it is MP potential path. There it is. Um, actually, it might not be potential path. It might be MP underscore. What other functions do we have? We have path object, potential path, linear path, grid. That's the one we want. We want a grid path because we're using the MP grid system. So the ID of the grid system is going to come from our object AI. So this is my grid. Now, before we move on any further, let's make sure that our instances are being created in the right order. So our instance creation order, object AI is the first, then all the NPCs are created and then the destination. So that's fine. As long as the AI is created first, then we should be okay to reference stuff. 
So, jumping back to our, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to our NPCs, we have a, what was I doing again? We have a, oh, there we go. We need object AI dot my grid. So, this is going to be obj underscore AI dot my, my grid. Now, the path is going to be my path because each of these characters has their own path. What happened to the music? The music died. There we go. Okay. Um, my path. Then we have an X start, which is going to be uh, X and Y of the current object. X goal is going to be t my target dot X. My target dot X and my target dot Y. And allow diagonal movements. Let's just say yes for now. All right. Now, in theory, if we run this, we should have a bunch of paths on the screen. And we don't. <laughs> Always the way. Uh, what have we done wrong here? Let's have a look. Is the draw event still run? No, it's not. Let's get rid of this crap because we don't need that anymore. That's probably the issue right there. Let's have a look. No, nope, that's not the issue. What is the issue? We have a path. Path add. MP grid path. Using the ID of that path. My path. X and Y. My target dot X. My target dot Y. And then allow that. That should be fine. Oh, you know what? We haven't called the event. Uh, idiot. Event user zero. There we go. So in our create event, after we've defined that we want a path and that we have a target, we also need to call the event, which performs the logic that we're trying to achieve. Uh, otherwise, the code's just not going to work. There we go. So now we have a bunch of guys on the screen. Um... And they all have a path. They're all trying to get somewhere. That's that's the, the, the places that they're trying to go. Now what we need to do is... One thing I don't like is that they are targeting the corners. Let's increase the offset by 16. Let's have a look at that. Now, they're going, now we're going to have a different issue, which I'll solve in a second. There we go. Um, not by 16, sorry, by 8, because the game is 16 by 16 tiles. So the offsets are 8, not 16, because it's a 16 by 16 game. So now you'll see that all the paths end at the middle of these um, destinations, right? So then the next thing we need to do is let's center our dude sprite, our, our guy sprite over here, because top left is not working properly. And then if we go back over here, you'll see that they're all off, off, uh, off the grid, when really they should be in the middle. So the only way that we can fix that is by setting our grid to 8 by 8 unfortunately and then sliding them down onto a tile an actual tile so i'm just going to do that <clears throat> i'm just going to put them on easy ones so that i can find like that uh, let's throw this guy down like that and let's throw actually you know what i can't tell if that guy is on the right thing so i'm just going to throw him on a corner over here throw this guy here on a corner there we go. Right now, all of our dudes are back on the correct path. Now, if we run the game again, you'll see that their paths should stay center, central to the tile set. So there we go. So all of the lines, you see, they're all coming through the exact middle of the tiles. And that keeps everything sort of um, on, the, on, the, on the correct rails, if that makes sense. Um, so now they're all on the correct rails, let's make them go to their destination. That's pretty easy. We can just use a path follow command. Um, so once we have a target and we have a grid, we can just say path start, I think. What path do we want to start? We want to start my path. And the speed is going to be one and the end action is going to be path actions stop because we don't want them to keep repeating. We don't want them to walk backwards along the path. Absolute is going to be true. Because we want them to be absolutely, uh, <laughs> we want them to be, I don't want to say absolutely because that's not what it means, but I want them to, to follow that path exactly from where they start along the line of that path. And I don't want them to sort of wander off as they pixel drift. And what we should have, the nearest destination that has not been occupied, um, we could do something similar to that. But what we should have is a bunch of people going to destinations and then they get there and then they do something. What do they do? Well, right now they do nothing. So we need to detect once they've reached their destinations, we're going to have them pick a different destination and then they'll just move on. And 
essentially we'll just have NPCs wandering around a town, basically. Um, and that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, so once they collide with a destination, <coughs> excuse me, um, so it's at a collision event with a destination, um, we know what the target is and we know what the collision is. So we can say something like if um, other equals target, I don't know if that works. By the way, my dogs are barking in the background, so that's what they're doing. Um, show debug message. And let's just say reached my target. All right, and that way we'll know that they've reached their target. Because otherwise, every time they walked past the target, if they touched one, it would be like... Uh, it would... Um, you'd have an issue where they touch another target on the way and then they run the event again to pick a new target, which we don't want. Right, obviously that that's an error. Uh, target, it's not target, it's called my target, that's why. My underscore target, and it's double equals for a conditional statement. I should know that. All right, there we go. So we've got a bunch of people sending out messages now saying that they reached their target, which we can see in the console. So if the thing that we collided with was my target, then we can simply event user zero again which will find us a new target, generate us a path to that target, and then start the path action. And the collision event won't fire again because we know that the one that we're colliding with is no longer our target because we just selected a new target. So in theory, pretty sure it's equals and equals equals are interchangeable in GMS. I don't think they are. And there you go. We have a, a bunch of people. They shouldn't be, but they are. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember, honestly. Um, you might be right. Um, but anyway, there you go. We've got a bunch of people now, like, walking around the map doing stuff. Um, they are, but it's better to use the right one. Ah, oh, yeah, cool. Right, so they are interchangeable. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so now they're just doing their thing. I mean, we can add more trees. To, like, we don't even have to do anything now. We just add trees. That, that's how easy this is. We go to our collision layer. We go to our room editor. We pick a different kind of tree. And it just magically is done for us. Let's add some kind of the trees like this. You know, block off this path that was here before. Um, let's block this path off. You know, this sort of thing. We don't want that guy walking through there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, and let's just run the game again and see what happens now. Now they should all just automatically readjust their pathing so that they can move appropriately around the new map. And it looks like that's what's happened. And there should be no... I mean, there obviously is a limit, like a resource limit. But in theory, we can just drag more of these people onto the map. And they should all just kind of do their thing and continue working and just continue traversing and, and moving around the world and doing whatever they want to do. One guy flew off the top. Yeah, because there's a... Oh, yeah, you're right. Someone did fly off the top. I saw him go out there. Why was he going out there? There's no target up there. There might be a bug. <laughs> there might be a bug. Let's put this one here. I know there's a room at the... Sorry, there's a, there's a building at the bottom. Oh, you know what? He might have been trying to get to this one at the bottom. Like the shortest path was to go up and around and all the way down and then back into this room over here. Make them cut the trees. Yeah, we could do that. That's probably really hard. We'd have to build a whole, like, AI kind of subsystem in order to make that work. <coughs> Let's have a look. There we go. So we've added a whole bunch more, and they are doing their thing. Love it. All right, so someone said, make them cut the trees. Let's do that. I think that's a good idea. Um, so, how the hell are we going to make them cut trees? That is a, a challenge, to say the least. A challenge. Challenge. Um, it is a challenge. I'm just thinking, guys. Give me, give me a moment. So, trees could be an ob... Trees would probably have to be an object that were cuttable. So we'll create an object. We'll call this object tree. OBJ underscore tree. Right. Now, let's give that tree the sprite of this tree. But we need a way to extract this sprite. So let's copy that. Let's duplicate that. 
Let's rename this SPR Tree. I called it Tre. SPR Tre. Uh, let's call it SPR Tree. Let's edit the image and let's go and convert it to frames. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, convert to frames. Then let's zoom right up on this and let's find our trees. Our trees are over here somewhere. Now we know sprites are 16 by 16 pixels. We're going to say that we have two sprites like that. Actually, you know what? Let's make this like that. And it's number of frames four and it's two per row. So six. Uh, there we go. Like that. Make a tree object give HP on collision with object tree reduce other HP. Um, okay. I don't know what that means, sorry. Um, let's just give these guys a pixel offset so that they are selecting the right tiles, which they are not. It's not offset, it's separation. Separation of one and one. There we go. And now we need to move them across. There we go. So we can move them across like that. Let's find our trees. Let's line them up. All right, there we go. So now they're lined up with our trees. And then let's move it down. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. I'm starting to come down with the cold. Um, now, they're also 32 by 32 tall. So I just messed up big time because the vertical offset is wrong now. So they're not 32 by... Yeah, they are 32 by 32 tall. Which means that I messed this up. This should be like that and then the vertical separation will be two which means that our vertical offset there we go got it um ah oh, crap there's a space between the tree sprites <laughs> all right let's use the small sprites then make it easy for ourselves there we go we'll use the small trees the shrubs the shrubbery oh, there we go all right. there we go now let's convert that am i continuing avast avast was just a a day of random can we make a piratey like game i was on holidays so i was just streaming all sorts of stuff um it's not actually a project that i want to to really do if that makes sense um so now that we have a sprite let's turn the speed off um tree what the, I don't know what this means. In a tree. Um, and I'm just going to say image, <coughs> excuse me, speed equals zero. Um, so it's not animated. And image index equals I random three because there's four sprites. Zero, one, two, and three. Um, now let's go into our world. Whoa, whoa. What did I do there? Oh, you know what I did? I messed up. I called, all right, let's call this tree one. Let's change the name of sprite tiles to sprite tree. <laughs> let's change the name of sprite tree one to sprite tiles. And then let's go back to our tile set and choose the correct tile set. There we go. Problem solved. <clears throat> Alrighty. So now, there we go. Everything's back to normal now. Let's throw some trees on the map. Um... So some of these trees, now let's make them path blockers. So for instance, this guy here needs to get rid of some trees in order to get out. So on our instances layer, I'm just going to do this now. I don't know if there's a brush to do this, but I'm just going to surround this dude with trees. So he can't get out of here. Like that. Um, and let's put some more trees like there so no one can get in either. There we go. So technically speaking, if we move this guy to here, the only place he will go is that destination. So let me just make sure that that is the case. Oh no, he got out because the trees aren't actually respected as collidable objects. So let's double check our creation order. And let's make sure that the AI object is created before all the trees. Yeah, it is. That's fine. So in our AI object, we can now also add a little script which adds objects. MP grid. I think it is add instances. The ID is going to be my grid. The object is going to be obj underscore tree and the precision is going to be false. So now if we run that, we should have a bunch of trees that are collidable. Right, cool. So those trees are now collidable. <clears throat> oh God, excuse me. 
Um, now, a bunch of people are getting to their destinations and staying there. I don't know what the deal is with that, but that's fine. These trees are collidable. So, let's give this guy an action. His action is going to be... Now, I don't know how we're going to do this. This is I'm, I'm winging this, guys. I'm winging it. Um, so, the action is going to be... We're targeting, we're targeting paths, right? So, maybe if we're not targeting a path, what they need to do is find the closest tree. Right, okay, guys. Give me one sec. I'm going to blow my nose. One sec. All right, sorry guys. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of coming down with a cold, so. Okay. <coughs> oh, God. All right, I'm back. Okay, so we've got this guy, and we want to sort of shift their logic around a little bit. So let's, um, let's make, I'll tell you what, let's actually, no, no, no let's not do that. Let's uh, give them a class, right? So woodcutters and adventurers, for instance. So class equals woodcutter. Um, class type woodcutter equals woodcutter, right? And then let's also add another class type adventurer. I don't know if I spelt that right. Let's Google that to make sure I spelt it correctly. I don't think I did. No, I did. Yay! Right. Right, there we go. So this, they're all going to start off, at, they're all going to be adventurers. Right? Actually, no, they're not. They're going to be random. They're going to be random either woodcutters or adventurers. Now, if they're an adventurer, we want them just to do what they were doing. Whatever they were doing before, in here. You're an adventurer. So, if class equals class type adventurer then go and just find a target, a destination that you want to explore to, and move there. Um, no else? Then if class equals class type woodcutter, then we want to find the nearest tree. That's what we want to do. We want to find the nearest tree, and we want to navigate to that tree. And then when we get there, we want to chop down that tree. So we need a... Oh, we have a target. It's called my target. Put the class types above the class. Yes, good call. Game Maker doesn't sort of forward compile. Um, so if you're a woodcutter, then we need to find the nearest target. So instance, find, I think there's a function for this. Find, I, I swear there is a find nearest. Find, let's, let's quickly dox this find I swear there is an instance where are the instance functions there's a whole document in this instn there we go instance here we go um, no instance functions I hate this documentation it's like useless there we go. Search. Okay, instance functions. Maybe we can get out of here. Here we go. Back to instances. Wonderful. Um, instances are oh no, that doesn't. That's not helpful. Instance functions. Here we go. Instance nearest. There's the function. All right, cool. So we're going to use that function to say my target equals instance nearest. Instance nearest. There we go. And we want to go from my X, my Y to OBJ tree. I want the nearest tree. Then if uh, my target, so if the target exists, we're going to create a grid to the target. Okay. Like so. We'll do the same thing that we did here because now my target should be set. And then we should be able to start a path to the target. Um, and then also in the draw event, I'm just going to... Uh, not hue shift them, but I'm just going to say if class equals class, I know we could, bleh, we could probably do this 
an easier way, but adventurers and everything else. So adventurers are going to be just drawn like regular. Everything else is going to be drawn, draw, set, color. And we're just going to put C red so that we know that they're adventurers. Um, draw, set, draw, set, color, set it back to white. At the end. So in theory, <clears throat> the adventurers should be no, they're all <laughs> Did we choose correctly? Or did I just mess up? Maybe let's just get rid of this one and see if some disappear. Yeah, cool. So fifty percent disappeared, which means I messed up. So we'll get rid of that and what we'll do is we'll say what function can we use for this? Draw set. I swear it was draw set color. Draw set color. Let me try that again. See blue. And that didn't work. All right, that's fine. What we'll do is we'll cheat. <laughs> we'll create uh, another sprite. We'll duplicate this one, and we'll just call it person two. There we go. And then in person. One image blend, thank you. That's the one. All right, we'll go back to person one and we'll get rid of this one. There we go. Hey, Ali Day, sir, you, you want to stop that, sir? Um, let's put this back as the person you're right, it's image blend. Thank you, Raspberry. Okay, let's go back here. Image blend equals C red. Let's have a look if that works. There we go. So our woodcutters are now. <laughs> Sorry, Pride. Uh, um, so the woodcutters are now red, and we will. I don't know why these guys aren't moving, but that's okay. Some of them have decided that they just don't want to participate in this game. Um, so the woodcutters, anyway, are going to find a target and then they're already doing that, but they're not moving because this if doesn't work. Any plans for a Unity live stream? Z null X? Um, possibly, possibly, possibly. It just depends. I have to, the problem with Unity is I have to practice a lot more uh, before I stream in it because otherwise... Uh, just terrible. Um, <clears throat> so if they're a woodcutter... What am I doing? This should be double equals as well because it's a comparator. Um, instance nearest my target. Well, first of all, do we have a target? Uh, do, we ha do we have a target when the user event is fired? Because they are a woodcutter. They don't move because they have chosen a target they can't reach since they never... And since they never reach it, the user event isn't getting cold again. Ah, yes. Good point. So they've chosen a target that they can't reach. They say, I thought that the MP grid... Ah, oh, you're right. They've chosen a target that they can't reach. Is there a function to determine... I don't know. Let's have a look. Um, to determine if the target is reachable. MP grid. MP grid. I don't think there is a function. I don't think that there is a function to determine if the path that was selected is impossible to reach. That's actually a really good point. And so they're not moving because they can't get there. Alright, we'll think about a way to fix that up. First of all, let's go back to these woodcutters. So the woodcutters are probably doing the same thing, actually. Actually, no, they aren't, because they'd be drawing their path if they were. Which they are not. There's no path coming out of the woodcutters. Ah, uh, you know what? The woodcutters are also selecting a path that they can't reach, and so they don't move. And you're right, there is a way to determine this. All we need to do is say, what does MP grid path return? 
returns a boolean whether or not it's true. So we can just say repeat until uh oh, hang on, we can't do that. <laughs> MP grid path returns a oh shit. Anyway, we need to put this in an infinite loop that basically just turns the keeps going. Anyway, the reason that uh, I'm going all over the place now. The reason that they can't get to the trees is because the trees are collidable in the in the um, grid system. And so they choose not to go there. So now all the woodcutters are going to the trees. Right? I think a Unity stream is a good idea. I've seen you in Unity. <coughs> I, I, I'm certainly considering doing a Unity stream, but I'm just terrible at Unity, so... Um, so they go to the tree when they can because it's not us. Uh, it's part of the MP system. That's actually kind of a a challenge. Is how do you get them to go there even when the position is blocked? Like we don't want them to be able to walk through the trees, obviously, but we also want them to be able to navigate to the tree's point. Anyway, problem for a different day. We'll do something real simple and just say that when the user collides with a tree, <laughs> when the user collides with a tree, this is the simple, the sim, simple, the, the sorry, simplest implementation. Harvest tree, literally instance destroy. There we go. Um, other, destroy the tree and then event user zero to select a new tree. Don't the trees actually have the blocking check for a collision instead? They do have the blocking, but you can't um, check for the collision with the MP system. All right, that's an issue there. Not set before reading it. My grid, my path. That's going to be because I think that the there is no tree, so this needs to come back because that was working to make sure that we don't start a path or a grid when there's no trees left. Cool. So now that there's no trees left, they're all just going to the position. So once there's no trees left, we will turn them back into adventurers. Um, class equals class type adventurer. There we go. In theory, they should eat up all the trees then they should turn back into adventurers, and then they should just go wandering around. But they're not. <laughs> of course they're not! Um, <laughs> Alright, what's happening? Because that only happens when they collide. Oh god. This is what happens when you don't plan code. It goes, it goes all over the place. Alright, so they collide with a tree. Destroys the tree. Calls this function. Checks to see for the nearest tree. Then... What we really need to do is say that if the target doesn't exist, we need to recall event zero. So let's go into the step event and say, how do we do this? Say, if my target, uh, if n not my target, then event user zero. I think that will work. Okay, cool. It did work. No, it didn't work. They're all going... Oh, no, it did work. One of the woodcutters has turned into a, an adventurer. Anyway, <laughs> I'm confused. I need to stop and have a think about this. But you kind of get the idea of, of what's happening here. I've, I've got it running really fast just to, just to demonstrate while we're debugging. I mean, if we turn the speeds down back to, you know, one one where they should be the idea is that you have a place or a world on the map where all of the npcs are kind of just going about their business you know you got these guys going around and they're they're looking for trees they're going to destinations of houses you know the 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 way to take this forward i think and i need to plan this a little better is to actually make it so that when they collide with a building they go inside when they go inside, they reference themselves and say, like, I am inside of this building, the building name, whatever it's called, you know, in, in one. And then when they want to navigate somewhere else, like they want to navigate to 
<coughs> under the blacksmith hut, they first of all go, am I inside? Yes, no. Yes, I'm inside. Then navigate to the nearest exit, and there'll just be a generic exit. When they hit the exit, they teleport back to the map, and then they navigate to their new target, which is, you know, m might be the inn. And then obviously, like a, uh, a uh, what do you call it? The woodcutter just stopped because his target disappeared. Yes, they, they just go to their target because the target disappeared. I thought that this step code would have fixed that, but it didn't. I might have just wrote it wrong. Actually, you know what? I'm being an idiot. Maybe this needs to be instance exists. Instance exists. My target. If the instance doesn't exist, we need to call event user zero again. So once all the trees are gone... Yes! That's solved the problem. Alright, so back into our... Uh, our drawer event. Let's say that if they are adventurers, I'm going to draw them as white. There we go. And now, finally, they should be woodcutters. And then they should all turn back into adventurers. Yes, thank you, XXL. Top Ice 1, Level Max Jelly 2, Master Pro Double XL. Um, let's throw down some more trees so that they don't all go to the same place. Some some editable trees. I have to figure out how to actually use the system um, to allow them to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To allow them to uh, move to a place that is blocked. Because ideally the trees should be blocking. They should They should block, you know. They shouldn't be just free for everyone. Instead of dragging the same... Use alt left mouse button. Oh god, shortcuts guys. Wow, thank you. There you go. And now I can just do that. Oh, that's so much better. Alright, there we go. Here I am, being an idiot, thinking that, you know, there's only one one way to do this. And of course, there's about 50 ways to do everything. Alright, there we go. So now we've got a bunch of trees. Let's see what happens when we run it. Let's let them go about their business. Obviously, some are outside the view, so I think let's back the view off as well. Let's back the view back to 0, 0, 1280 by 720. Let's have a quick look. And just like that, we have created a bustling... Look at that. You can actually see them retargeting the trees when they're done and then when they're all the trees are gone they go back to being villagers how cool is that i think that's really awesome next step i think is definitely to first of all fix up the issue with the trees being um collidable so that they're, they can actually be non-collidable uh there we go and i just want to shrink this down as well this is going to look stupid because of warping but uh, 500. Yeah. This is going to screw up the aspect ratios. I just wanted to see everything up close. Um, yeah, so they go and they do their stuff and they select different classes. Maybe at some point in time they're a woodcutter. Maybe at another point they're blacksmiths. Maybe at another point they are uh, alcoholics going to the, the bar. You know, maybe they're going home. Maybe they're going adventuring. Um, and based on those classes they do different things and so you know they can go about doing whatever they're doing and then we have a time system involved so you know at nine o'clock it goes and it's you know it wakes up at 10 o'clock it goes off and it does this at 12 o'clock it goes off and it does this you know so the time system is just a timer and an object counting up and it might just say that when the hours are 11 they switch to a different class and the class defines what they're doing so you know they could also be friendly maybe it's a case of you know if they are within a certain distance to another one of themselves then stop the path navigate to the closest instance of themselves that they found and then stop the path when they're standing next to each other and then they become dialogue you know a class type of dialogue where they just throw up random messages and pretend that they're talking um going inside i think is is the next step so you know they enter a building um, they hang out inside the building and then 
after a certain time they can come out and then continue their navigation off. But I think we'll do that in another video just because I've been streaming for an hour now. It's dinner time, so I'm going to shoot off. But I hope you guys have enjoyed that very quick live stream. We may continue this concept. Um, I think we will because I'm, I'm quite happy with the way it looks, the, the way it's working, and I want it to do a bit more. But um, we'll see how we're going. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you can, head over to patreon.com forward slash rm2kdev where you can join up and get some cool rewards and participate in live streams and other stuff like this. I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care and bye for now.